Well, yesterday we talked about South America almost exclusively. It's a very South American countries and South American issues. The one thing we don't talk about uh, enough, we don't see enough about, is what Brazil means in Central America, particularly in a country like El Salvador. So we're very lucky that the, uh, the Stars of the Lions in El Salvador has opened a new embassy yesterday here in Canberra. And that we have with us today Juan Jose Garcia, the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs for Salvador living, living abroad uh, in El Salvador. And Mr. Garcia has been gracious enough to agree to come and speak for about 20 minutes and, and give us a perspective uh, from the South Florida's point of view on uh, the result of Brazil. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize about my English. I always try to do my best. And, um, well, the English panelists and participants in the conference, Latin America and the shifting sands of global power regional reaction to rise of Brazil. Professors, students, and staff at the Australian National University, ladies and gentlemen, for me it's a pleasure to be here and talk a little bit about the emergency of Brazil in Latin America and the bilateral relationship between El Salvador and Brazil. Let me start trying to point out what are the changes in the model of foreign affairs of El Salvador. What is the main approach of the, our foreign policy when it is the bilateral relationship between Brazil and El Salvador can be sense. Well, we, we place an objective in this for, uh, foreign policy, and it's to place El Salvador as a country with open foreign policy and strategic vision, to participate in the international arena as a nation that promotes peace, political dialogue, <coughs> cooperation, security, and development. That is the main objective our foreign policy. And this objective is reached, can be reached, according to three main uh, elements that guide our uh, foreign policy. First, the international relations based on the respect for the international principles and legal instruments. Second, no ideological bias, and three, emphasis in the protection of human rights of the Salvadorian Arab. That's just a big change between foreign policy uh, started in, in the 2009 when the government president the Funes took office. So we have to set a priority of the foreign policy of El Salvador. They, there is seven uh, uh, priorities areas according to these uh, uh, guys that we said before. First, international placement of the Salvador in, in, in the global arena, regional integration, especially in Central America and the Caribbean integration, uh, Salvadorians living abroad, which is the main thing uh, in our policy, uh, foreign policy, because we have three million of Salvadorians living abroad, mainly in the United States, Canada, and Australia. We have here around 20,000 Salvadorians living in all of this country. For cooperation and development, economic promotion, six, sovereignty and territorial integrity, and seven human rights. That is the priority area. Two of the top uh, priorities in the foreign policy are, first, a strong relation with regional strategic partners, such as Brazil. And second, a strong relation with South America. Now is the time to look at a little bit more in detail to the south, instead to look at always up north, 
to what be uh, the foreign policy right before the 2009. Now we have diplomatic relations with uh, 160 countries, and members, and this distributes as follows. You say America, we have 33 countries, Europe 47, Asia 26, Africa 8, Oceania 2, North America 3, Caribbean 14, Central America 6, and South America 10. Also, we established a new diplomatic relation with Cuba, Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, as soon with the island of Dominica in the Caribbean Basin. El Salvador has opened up new embassies in Cuba, Australia, just yesterday opened up, uh, our embassy here, and will be open new mission next October in Russia. So, this is the main uh, area of foreign policy started in uh, 2009 yeah. with the new president and new government took office and it was a real breakdown between uh, the foreign policy before uh, the 2009. So in this context, we are looking more uh, for the Thais, uh down south. Uh, and we look at uh, Brazil as a main bilateral relationship with uh, El Salvador. Let's talk a little bit then uh, this type of uh, bilateral relations between El Salvador and Brazil. Well, El Salvador established uh, a diplomatic relations in 1906, S strained relations in the political, economic, and cooperation areas. In three years, there has been uh, many visits and meetings at high level, uh, both presidential and minister. We have seven presidential visits between Brazil and El Salvador. President Funes was three times in Brazil, and President Lula was four times in El Salvador. <coughs> Matching in the priorities of social issues of the agenda of government in both countries, cooperation in various areas such as biofuels, land development, agriculture, public safety, health, education, justice, security, and among others. Agriculture cooperation plays a strategic role in this type of bilateral cooperation. Because, uh, you know, the importance of agriculture in Brazil, 27% of the GDP of Brazil came from agricultural sector, and agriculture implied uh, 17 million of jobs in Brazil. 25% of the entire world who came from Brazil also. So the agricultural sector is, you know, a key area that we have to look at. Uh, let's uh, try to address a little bit about the trade relation between El Salvador and Brazil. First, trade exchange has experienced a growth of more than 140% in the recent years, in the three years from uh, 2009 to 2012, the trade exchange has grown 140%. Salvadorian exports to Brazil have grown more than 353%, while imports have shown a growth of 141%. According to the Central Reserve Bank in El Salvador, Brazilian investment in El Salvador in 20, uh, 2011 was 12 million US dollars and reached near 20, uh, 26 million by March 2012. Currently, Brazil is evaluating a new possible investment in energy, 
than by foods among other uh, products. <coughs> Brazil also has offered cooperation to establish a bank of development in El Salvador and has offered support to renew the buses of the public uh, public transportation in El Salvador. <coughs> Let's see the cooperation but under the model of South, South uh, uh, type of, of cooperation. Before 2010, there would be only 19 uh, technical cooperation projects between Brazil and El Salvador. Two in execution, a, a management initiative at 15, and two were uh, cancelled. And now, in the 2012, we have 35 cooperation, technical cooperation between El Salvador and Brazil. 27 in execution right now. That's very important also because uh, we are leading uh, a prospect of South-South technical cooperation between uh, Latin America countries. We also have a rich some uh, cooperation, of course, with a uh, project with Mexico and with uh, Chile, which are the main uh, partners in this South South uh, mode of cooperation. So we have to, uh, you know, to look at very carefully this type of technical assistance um, model of South South. Uh, uh, technical cooperation. Brazil transfer of key aspect of social and economic model. One of these is uh, the uh, Lula's government calls uh, ter uh, territorios de ciudadanos, uh, territory of citizens, which is a uh, um, um, very innovative uh, type of socio-economic development in specific uh, territories where, uh, you know, the problems, social problems was arise like hunger, poverty, violence, etc. So, um, in, in this particular project, uh, this particular program, Salvadorian was a version of uh, territorial uh, citizenship. We call territorios de progreso, which is the model of uh, Brazilian model of uh, territorials de ciudadanos, which is, uh, uh, you know, this type of, uh, uh, to look at a little bit more carefully a specific territories and try to make some social and economic improvement in that uh, a, a specific area. Um, following this model, El Salvador has two territorials de progreso, in the eastern part of uh, El Salvador. So this is very important for us to address social and economical issues, trying to develop specific territories. Let's talk a little bit about sica brazil relations, which is uh, very important also in this regard. Brazil has been SICA's regional observer since October 2008, is incorporation an extra regional member of Central American Integration Bank is uh, now under negotiation. Today there have been three SICA Brazil summits in 2000, 2005, and 2008. During these, these summits, the presidency, the president addressed issues related to democracy, poverty reduction, environment, biofuel production in the region and among other uh, projects. And so, Brazil from the, from the Salvadorian and Central American perspective. According to Latin American Barometer Report 2011, Brazil stands out as the country with lowest rate of economic problem. So we have to emulate the model of social and economical development plays on in Brazil. <coughs> Brazil has a leading role in the global mining and steel production and exporting of iron ore, bauxite, manganese, and gold. 
Brazil has a very high diversified and highly integrated manufacturing. <laughs> Brazil is the second country in the region with the largest oil reserve after Venezuela. And Brazil is the world's leadership in the know-how in technologies used in exploration and production in deep waters through Petrobras, which also venture into gas-related activities in and out Brazil. Brazil, from the Salvadorian and uh, Central American perspective. Brazil has uh, membership of BRICS uh, organization, which is the Brazil is, 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 is the voice of Latin America in certain forums like uh, this, which is very strategic uh, 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 forum for Latin America. Brazil is a country with vast natural resources <coughs> and large domestic market. And this is very important because the strategic of combat of poverty came from Brazil using this large internal market, deepening the internal market is the base of how Brazil has uh, addressed the uh, social and economic problem. Brazil is a country with international weight in Latin America. This allows to interact with the most powerful <coughs> countries in the international system. Brazil finally has positioned itself as a representative in the interest of the development world, especially in Latin America. Brazil has been referenced to the Salvador government, President de Funes, has said, for instance, that his reference would be the President de Lula and President Obama. So, Brazil is a, a strategic party for Central America region, and this is evident in the progress of dialogue, SICA Brazil. And Brazil also become a leader for Latin America region as playing leading role in various international venues. For example, has been one of the four countries, along with Japan, India, and Germany, to push for a, a reform in uh, a UN reforms that includes the expansion of permanent and non-permanent members of Security Council in the United Nations. And to improve the uh, method of work in the United Nations and to improve the transfer, uh, better work and transfer of uh, in the Security Council also. So El Salvador is committed with this program and reform in uh, United Nations as well as other uh, regional uh, efforts. Yeah, as I said before, for a long time back in the 80s, 1980s, a large Salvadorian group came to Australia because um, we have a very hard times in the 80s in El Salvador. The civil war was, was going on, so more than 2,000 Salvadorians came here uh, in Australia to work and live here. So we have to look at a little bit more in deep in Australia uh, as a country because we, we, we need to look at our community. One of the main foreign policy we have uh, set in, in, in the browser is to promote the linkage between the Salvadorian jazz diaspora and uh, El Salvador. So we opened up a consulate in Melbourne in, in 2005 because uh, Melbourne is um, the, the city has, has a, a large Salvadorian community. The Salvadorian community has an important, uh, is the second largest uh, Latin American community here in Australia. So we have to look at a little bit Australia as a country because it's the, the residency of most of the most important uh, our, our community. But also, Australia has uh, an important linkage with El Salvador and Central America. 
It has an important, for example, in climate change approach and studies. We need to do that, something on climate change. Uh, yesterday, one of the, our meetings in the uh, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we said that we, we, we really have the impact of climate change. A couple of weeks ago, we have a, a very disturbance climate while in the east part of the suburb was a dry, in the west part was a flow. And it was, um, you know, in Salvador is a very tiny, very small country, 20,000 square kilometers in, the, in, the, in this station. So we, the impact of uh, hurricanes, the impact of uh, flow, we, we, we really to, to do something about this. The other area that uh, Australia has a, a very large experience is in agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. uh, last week, the President de Funes said that uh, the engine of economic and social development in El Salvador must be the agriculture sector. So we have to learn about agriculture production, agriculture redistribution, and food security issues, like uh, uh, Australia has a lot of things with, with that, uh, to teach us a little bit about, uh, about this. So in this type of uh, uh, areas of cooperation, Australia is very important for El Salvador. SICA, well, Australia is a member of, Salvador member of SICA uh, right now. So that's a very important uh, integration in Australia in the sector of America as a region, for example. We were talking with Guatemala also to get along with El Salvador to do something in their relationship with Australia also. We were talking about open up uh, an integrated embassy or consulate here in, in Australia. So what I mean is um, we cannot get um, this type of uh, social and economic development insulated, like El Salvador, Guatemala, or Nicaragua. We can get into this as a region uh, like this. F for that reason, we are not, um, we are not along with the uh, ideological blocs, for example, ALBA, UNASUR, but as a region in Central America. That is the strategic foreign policy uh, we have to do something in the region. For that, we are very committed with regional Central American and Caribbean uh, integration process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if there's uh, one thing that El Salvador seems to have had a lot of expertise in, in recent decades, is in managing conflict. Uh, El Salvador went through this very long, bloody civil war, but they came out with a, 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 a majestic peace treaty in 1992, which stabilized the country politically. But then, as, as many of us know, uh, 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 there was a, a serious problem of crime and a lot of criminal gangs and the Maras and other uh, uh, sort of youth uh, criminal organizations that uh, uh, made El Salvador one of, the, one of the most dangerous cities with the highest murder rates in Latin America. And yet, in recent months, there have been some very uh, startling developments uh, in terms of sitting down and negotiating uh, truce and, and peace or arrangements with the Maras. And I'm wondering if uh, you could comment a bit more and tell us a bit more about that, and maybe also discuss the possibility that El Salvador might offer global expertise on how to deal with issues of this kind for other parts of the world. So, thank you. Thank you for your, 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 your question, because, man, man, I, I allow to, to do, uh, elaborate a little bit of uh, peace accords and democratic process in El Salvador. For sure, we resolve our conflict through dialogue and negotiation process. We was very successful in 1992. Right now, I think El Salvador model of uh, negotiation process and dialogue process and political arena is a case study in the entire world. You know, Colombia is right now in the process of dialogue and negotiations is 
a difficult world in, in Colombia. So the Colombia government asked for you know, some learning experience and advice from El Salvador, how to do or deal with this type of, of negotiation and peace accords process like we have in, in 1992. So, but uh, the, pro the, 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 the peace process and the dialogue and the, is not, um, as not the end of the, you know, some sort of uh, big issues and problems. And for true, we have uh, a lot of problems in, with violence, with gangs, and with uh, immigration process also. So we had to deal with that. And one is to make some dialogue among, among those uh, gangs, La Mara Salvatrucha and Amara Mara Dieciocho. That is the most important thing. So through this dialogue, the homicide rate came down from 15 homicides per day to almost five uh, homicides a day. So that is a big improvement in the security process. For sure, we have to uh, make some sustainable this growth. And this is the challenge right now. We are working as a government with the Catholic Church, with other type of international organization like a UNPD or La OEA, which are very involved in this type of uh, political uh, negotiation among uh, gangs that make sustainable uh, this type of uh, uh, accords and this type of truth. So this is the, the main challenge right now, and we are working and make some improvement in this type of true, made some uh, uh, sustainable process in that. I might abuse the chair's position. You had two slides up about Brazilian South South Technical Corporation. <coughs> Could you tell us a little bit about the, the experience of doing effectively development assistance programming from Brazil versus doing it with, say, the European Union, the United States, Japan, uh, possibly even Australia, what, what it's been like on an administrative level, on a process level, of dealing with the Brazilians versus the traditional government? Well, the traditional project of cooperation was a financial cooperation, you see, uh, United States and the U European Union. Most uh, projects are financial uh, assistance in health, in water sanitation, and education, and local development process, etc. But there is a financial now we are changing from this type of traditional financial system more in technical assistance and South South uh, uh, type of project. So this is a, a very um, uh, a very innovative uh, type of management, the cooperation among uh, South American countries and Central America. We are experiencing this type of South-South uh, mode of cooperation and technical assistance like this. I, as I said before, um, Brazil has addressed a very improvement in uh, poverty alleviation, for example. We have to learn how Brazil has dealt with these uh, big problems, uh, and the hunger and the poverty alleviation. So the uh, uh, territorios de ciudadanos make the, the difference between them. Um, we emulate that. Uh, we, we stimulate the, this type of uh, territorial development, like uh, the, those two type of uh, uh, presidential programs I call uh, territorios de progreso. So, so this type of uh, assistance is more horizontal than vertical. So. In this type of, of, of technical uh, cooperation, uh, the priorities are set by the host country. Uh, the El Salvador set the priorities and they make uh, this type of cooperation. It's not this 
the, the, the sunny countries that set the priorities. So, well, well, thank you. Thank you.